The next topic we're going to look at is thermal energy transfer. And that's quite a big topic, so we're going to break it down. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at the concepts of conduction and insulation. So these are the learning objectives for the entire unit. Okay, so we're going to be able to describe what heat transfer is, and we're going to use three different ways to explain it through conduction, today's lesson, convection and radiation for later lessons. Also in those later lessons, we're going to explain the role of convection in everyday phenomena, and today we're also going to explain how insulation is used to reduce energy transfer between buildings and also in the human body. So the first thing we have to do is define, well, what is thermal energy? So thermal energy also is known as heat energy, and it's basically the energy that moves or flows from a hot region of an object to a cold region of an object, or even in a system. So for example, if you're, you're hot on a summer's day, how it, the heat moves from you to the colder surroundings. Okay, and it's basically broken down into three different processes, conduction, which we're looking at today, convection, which we'll look at in a later lesson, along with radiation, again looking at at a later lesson. So today's focus is going to be on thermal conduction. So what is thermal conduction? Well, here is a definition in red. Okay, so it's basically how, how heat or thermal energy moves through an object without the actual object moving itself. So examples of good thermal conductors um, are solids and in particular metals, and we'll explain why soon, and gases are worst. Okay, so we don't call gases very good thermal conductors, um, we call them insulators. And also a vacuum, a vacuum being um, when there is nothing within a, a volume is not very good, well it's actually useless for conduction. So no conduction happens in space, for example, because space is a vacuum. Okay, and as we just previously said, uh, for gases, gases are poor conductors, therefore we say gases are good insulators. Okay, so how does this conduction happen uh, down into the molecular level? So here we have a, say, a metal rod. At one end, it's hot. At the other end, it is cold. Okay, so you can see that the heat is moving from the hot part of that metal rod to the cold part of that metal rod. So what's happening? Okay, so in the hot part, okay, here, the molecules are moving quickly. Okay, same reason would be if I started putting fire um, against your, your legs, for example, you'd start to move quickly as well because you begin to shake more when you're, you're um, heated because okay, you're gaining that kinetic energy. And there's forces um, called intermolecular forces, which you'll learn about more in chemistry, but intermolecular forces are the forces between molecules. Okay, So just like international is between nations, uh, intermolecular is between the molecules in this particular, um, say, metal um, rod okay and it means that if you're vibrating quickly and the guy next to you is not vibrating at all then if you bump against him he starts to vibrate as well he starts to move and the stronger these intermolecular forces um, between uh, the molecules are uh, the faster these vibrations are passed the quicker that, that transfer is occurring by conduction okay so a very specific uh, conductor is metals Okay, and it conducts electricity in a very specific way. Okay, so you'll learn from chemistry um, that not only do the metals vibrate, but the electrons orbiting their nuclei also can move very quickly and jump between one metal atom to the other. And these energy, uh, these electrons can also transfer energy very quickly. Okay, so here's the same example with that metal rod. So you've got the, the hot metal atoms, okay, right here. And you've got electrons also moving around them. So this, this, these electrons can also carry this heat energy from the hot part of that metal rod to the cold part of that metal rod. Okay. So most of the best conductors are metal. So, so example, iron's a very good conductor of metal. Copper is as well. And you'll also learn that uh, diamond is, although it's on a metal, okay, it's covalently bonded. It's an excellent conductor because it's also got these very strong bonds between all the carbon atoms in, um, in the diamond. Very strong intermolecular forces. So that's to do with conduction, but then you've got to ask yourself, well, how does that 
assist me in keeping warm with cold clothing. Okay, so here's a picture of myself uh, on the catwalk. Um, so we already discussed the idea that air is a very poor conductor, but it's very good at insulating heat, keeping heat in. Okay, so what clothes do is they basically trap a pocket of air between our body and the clothes, um, and what that does is that it has a greater insulating effect on of the clothing. So we're, we're a nice warm um, person um, and the co it's cold outside. So what is happening is the air between our clothes is, is keeping that heat energy uh, with us and not conducting it to the outside, okay, where it's nice and cold. Okay, so animals also do a very similar thing. Uh, that's the reason why, for example, a cat has fur or a dog has fur, because it's doing the same thing. It's just trapping those air molecules um, insulating itself um, and keeping the warmth in itself rather than into the cold surroundings. Okay, so the heat energy is staying inside the animal and not going outside, not being conducted out. Okay, so how fast this actually happens uh, is dependent on a number of factors. So you can actually increase the amount of transfer from, uh, from conduction uh, in several ways. The first one is using a better conductor. So for example, if you want to change, uh, increase the amount of thermal transfer, so you'd move, for example, from air, which is a poor conductor of heat, to metal, for example. Uh, you decrease the thickness of the sub substance, so there's less um, atoms or molecules for the heat energy to transfer through. Uh, you can also increase the area of the substance, okay, so it's, again it's the thinness and increasing the air, more heat transfer through conduction, and you can also increase the temperature difference across the substance. Okay, so for example, um, it's faster for you to get cold, for example, if it's uh, minus 5 degrees Celsius outside than it is if you were, um, it was a, a hot day, say 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, it takes longer for you to cool down um, at 25 degrees Celsius when it's outside than it does when it's minus 5 degrees Celsius. Okay, so how do we find this best conductor? What kind of experiments can we do? Okay, so the classic one is using a Bunsen burner and several metal rods and matchsticks and wax. So you've got to ask yourself, well, how does this work? Okay, so all the rods are the same length and cross-sectional area to make it a fair test. Okay. And they are all heated equally with this Bunsen burner at one end. And basically what happens is that the best conductor is going to conduct it fast, the heat fastest. So it's going to melt the wax at the end of the rod and that matchstick is going to fall off. Okay, so the better conductor, the faster this will happen. Okay, and usually, for example, in this experiment, copper of those metals that are provided would be the best conductor because when you do this experiment, copper, the copper rod is the, the rod in which the wax melts and the matchstick falls off first. You can also compare objects. So here's comparing brass and wood. So what you do is you have some white gum paper. On one side you have the brass, the other or another side you have the wood, but they can be two different conductors. And so basically it's going to burn the that side of the wood first because what's happening is that brass metal is moving its heat away quicker than the wood because wood's a very good insulator whereas brass is a very good conductor of heat. Okay so what's happening is the brass is moving away uh, the heat away from the hot end of the brass to the cold end of the brass, brass a lot faster than the wood so that means that the, the wood the heat's staying too long and it's going to cause enough to combust the, the paper. Okay, therefore, brass would be the better conductor, and wood would be the better insulator. And water is another example of a poor conductor. It's a very good insulator. And you can demonstrate this by, say, boiling a, a Bunsen, getting a Bunsen burner and boiling a boiling tube full of water, okay, where well, you're heating it at the top of the boiling tube. So the water will start to boil at the top of the boiling tube and release um, vapor, okay, but you can still hold it because both glass and uh, water are very poor conductors of heat. Okay, it's because you can see that because the bottom of the tube remains cold enough for you to hold it, which means it's not conducting the heat very well. If you did the same thing with a, a metal tube, you would not be holding on to that metal tube very long 
because that heat's going to be transferred very quickly because metals are good conductors. This experiment illustrates that there's very little transfer through conduction at the top of the test tube compared to the bottom, so it means that um, both water and glass are very poor conductors of insulators. And we've already discussed this, but air is a good insulator, so we've seen that with birds, that's why birds have feathers, that's why you um, put insulation into the roof of your homes, that's why you, uh, if you get cold at night, you put a blanket on because it's going to trap that air in, uh, and you won't conduct your own heat energy into the surroundings as quickly because that air is going to be trapped and insulate you. And also you use insulation to save money with your hot water um, cupboard because it's going to stop that hot water, the heat released to the surroundings. So just to finish off, we'll just do some uh, quick filling in the gaps. So pause the video now, okay, uh, and put the appropriate word into the appropriate gap. And once you've um, done that, come back, and let's see if you got 100%. Okay, so the first thing is, conduction is the main form of something transfer in solids, so you should have got heat transfer. This is because the molecules are relatively close together. Extra heat energy makes the molecules move more. They pass on their extra vibrational energy to neighbouring molecules. Metals are good conductors of heat energy because they contain many free electrons, which can move through the solid and transfer energy. And finally, electrons give up the energy when they collide with other molecules. Okay, so that's basically uh, the lesson for today. Uh, next lesson, we'll look more at the heat transfer associated with convection and radiation.